Right now I'm pretty excited. Uh, I just hopped in the Boxster S because I'm going to do a bit of a comparison video in the driving feel of a new 2023 Toyota GR Corolla. So I've been invited to Hinterland Toyota here on the Gold Coast to drive their press car. They've got a car here that, uh, so if, if you've got an order for one, they allow you to drive it, which is pretty awesome. They don't uh, let everyone drive it. It's, it's just for customers who are waiting in line for their GR Corolla to arrive and uh, for a few press guys and uh, and then some poor lucky schmo like me. So off I go, I'm gonna head over and then I'll do a comparison, kind of what the feel is compared to obviously this modified Boxster S and then also our newest addition, our, uh, our 2006 stock standard WRX. So we'll see what they, uh, you know, they're all wheel drive, so they're a bit more comparable. And of course I've had several Evos in the past other Rexies drove the GR Yaris, which was an awesome car. And we'll try to link it up and show you kind of what the feel is between them and handling how they rev. Uh, and we're doing, you know, I've, it's the same road I've done as well as the, the Supra. So I'll uh, get into it a bit more as I get behind the wheel. There we go. Just arrived in your land Toyota and look what's out front. Oh, it's definitely a bit more menacing in the flesh. Definitely you see those bigger guards in the back. So this is the Australian one. We only get the one here with the diffs in it. And the signature exhaust. Pretty sweet. And the classic GR4 in the side skirt, going back to like the old Celica GR4s. Let's go uh, take it for a drive. Couldn't have planned it any better. I just drove around the block and on the side of the road is a GR ER. So uh, I'll skip the first impressions because uh, I want to go film outside and just see what the, check the size comparison between these two is. Let's have a look. And uh, yeah, pretty awesome to be able to get them so close. Okay, GR Corolla. GR Yaris. Obviously a little bit bigger. This is its own platform. This isn't the rally, which is the diffs or you know sport in the other some other countries. Probably a bit more menacing in the GR Yaris, just uh, it's a smaller car being two-door and those rear fender flares built into the body look absolutely massive. But the Corolla, probably more usable. I mean, it's got a better back seat, definitely more trunk room. Interior wise, we'll talk about in a second when we hop back in, but the interior wise is quite a bit bigger. And visibility, I prefer the visibility on the GR Corolla because the GR Yaris, I don't know if we can, I'll show you here. The mirror, see the gap between the mirror and that screen? It's, uh, it's really quite small when you're in there. Wow, wow, cool. I've got a good opportunity to get them side by sides, but height-wise, look about the same. Length-wise, obviously a bit longer. Just a bit more practical, kind of a, you know, it's more Evo size, Rexy size. All right, let's get in, set up our cameras, and we'll go for a drive. Let's have a look. As soon as we get in the car, seating position is good. These seats... That's the passenger, obviously, but these seats are fantastic. They're nice and supportive. They're better than what we have in our WRX. Obviously, they're not as good as our GT3 seats in the Porsche, but better than the stock Porsche seats. Uh, screen, big, good size. Uh, I believe it's a bit bigger than that GR Yaris. And there's actually a gap, so you can see. Visibility is great in this. You know, it's typical Corolla, everything else, with the nice shifter, you know, and the nice GR wheel. Start up. Just off the button, it's a manual seat. Fake noise gets pumped in, but it's all right. It's not too bad. It's not too fake sounding. It is a bit better and a little bit more realistic than the, uh, well, because it is more real than the GR Yaris because the center exhaust pipe actually has a valve on it that uh, opens up on that cold start. All right, avoid excessive acceleration due to temperature. So I'm, we're not gonna be launching this anyway. We just wanna have a drive and a feel. So we'll get all nice and set up and comfortable. Yeah, it's, it's nice. 
you know, it's it's a hell of a lot better than our WRX. Like the WRX just feels so cheap um, because it is cheap. These are about seventy thousand here in Australia. I just paid sixteen thousand for a two thousand six WRX with. 80,000 kilometers on it one owner so that's a bit of a hard one to find but it's a great car uh, compared to our Boxster our Boxster here you get one of those for about 35 40 grand in the condition with the work done that ours has but it's still good value of course warranty easy okay well pretty easy to get the seating position right it's you know it's got good shoulder support not bad around the midsection. Obviously, if you want to really track it, you want buckets. But you can, you know, raise the headrest up a little bit, and you can. Looks like you can probably pass through a harness. Nice touch. Um, but we're going to take it out and see. You know, gear stick. Look, like the GR uh, Yaris was very. It's it's just smooth, precise. It's got that. It doesn't flop around, so it's very. Uh, it's it's a lot like our Porsche, but definitely way better than the. Uh, than our WRX. The WRX obviously with so many more rubber bushings, we, so we just replaced a lot of them to get a better feel. But the, the five-speed WRX is uh, not the best. Anyway, we're gonna go now and have a little bit of, you know, this is just kind of in in traffic driving. Not a hard throw, it's a short throw, but it's not, a sh it's not uh, you know, it's a short front to back throw, but not in height, which is great, because I really hate, um, I really hate a short, stubby shifter that's like on the on the ground because you can't you just can't reach it in time you know the ideal thing you want a hand space they say you want a hand space between the wheel and the shifter and yeah we get that with this clutch take up's pretty hot it's all right it's got good so they uh slightly different engine between this and the gr yaris uh, yeah, Toyota always improving. Apparently, they've uh, they've tweaked their their calibration, and, and of course, they, you know the different exhaust setups a little bit more power, a little bit more torque for, and it goes a little bit higher up. So that's pretty cool. All in all, um, yeah, we haven't wound it out yet. We just now up to temperature, so we can start going a bit, revving a bit higher. But that torque holds on a little bit better. I think there's a tweak in the cylinder heads or something like that that they've done. I'm not sure the full tech specs, but. It's, uh, there is definitely a few changes between this and the GR Yaris. Cruising in gear, how fast am I going? 70 in third gear. When you give it a little bit and let off, if you can hear that, you get a blow off noise. That's pretty cool. It's nice to have that a little choo choo. But in gear, acceleration is fantastic. There's lots of torque. I mean, this is a three cylinder, 1.6 liter. Plenty of torque. Um, size wise, fitting. Okay, I'm six foot two, uh, fairly tall, uh, you know, um, weight wise, uh, 95 kilograms, so almost 200 pounds. Um, and yeah, comfortable. I actually had to move the seat forward because whoever was driving this before, it was uh, way too far back for me. So yeah, if you're a big guy, this is good. And then, of course, there's a usable back seat. So even with me sitting here, uh, there's enough room. Definitely for, for my kids are about are 12 and 15. My kids definitely would have room back here. So uh, yeah, it's a good size car. I mean, it's a Corolla. So yeah, it's a good size car. But it's a sports car. Yeah, it's nice to have some room for a change. So this feels pretty good. And it's an out of the, you know, from the showroom floor, take it to the racetrack car. Massive brakes. I mean, super, I guess you could, but you need a, you know, you want to change your fluid, probably change your fluid in this too. 70 grand, there's not else, nothing else you get around here. You know, the new Golf R is 80. The Supra we test drove is 110. So there's not a lot of new car, you know, the Hyundai ends you can do, but they're not all-wheel drive, and they just, I don't think they're going to be quite up to this, even with their limited slip diffs and things. Do here. Um, yeah, just driving through traffic. Look, it felt, it felt easy. Super Corolla, you know, similar to the WRX. Not as obviously harsh as our Porsche, not as firm as the Supra. 
um, but an easy one. So we'll take it up here. It felt very balanced. So quite a few roundabouts we had to go through. This road, I don't know if you can tell, my head bouncing around is a fairly, uh, a fairly rough road for the start here. Soaks it up with ease. You know, it's firmer, obviously, but it's not as bone jarring as as the uh, as this, you know, my Porsche is. But the Supra is a bit more dampened, kind of felt a bit rough here. But the WRX, of course, it feels choppy here. But this feels, yeah, it's bumpy but planted. The uh, just the older suspension geometry in that old WRX just felt a bit, yeah, just a bit not. Uh, it doesn't feel super planted here. Anyway, let's continue on and uh, see how we go. Okay, we got a red light, so we can uh, so we can give it a bit off this.
this is what I wanted to test. I want to see the feel here. You know, I'm not pushing it to the point of understeer, oversteer. I just want to get it out here and feel it. Feel the steering. Like, you know, electric steering cars is uh, not that flash. Um, this feels feels pretty good. I, can, I feel pretty connected. You know, journalists always have some weird analogies and stuff. Pick up some hitchhikers. Sorry, bro. No problem.
does have a bit of body roll, which kind of keeps it comfortable, but you know, that's easily fixed. You know, White Line's gonna have a sway bar kit for this, and it's gonna be pretty damn good package to just take to the track, blast around, and then still do the school run. And then park it wherever the frick you want, because it's uh, it's a Corolla, you know, and, and only the people who know will know. It's got the fender flares and stuff, but for the most part, it's just a nice, easy Corolla. You can daily drive, commute, total reliability, five-year warranty. I mean, awesome. So, you know, big thank you to the guys at Hinterland, Toyota here in the Gold Coast in Australia, letting me take their press car out and said, this is a car for for their customers who've ordered them to take them for a drive. Um, you know, it's not a it's not a test drive car, so uh, it's pretty lucky that I was able to take this out and have a go, so. Do I recommend one? Yes, and this will, this would be an awesome car for a hell of a lot of people at a fairly affordable price. You know, 70 grand sounds like a lot. In Australia, a new Jeep Wrangler is over $90,000. So um, 70 grand for this is a bargain. Now, something that I touched on before uh, was the noise. Now, the noise in this car is not piped in, apparently, like the uh, GRRs. So the noise that you hear is the is the noise of the mechanical devices. It's the diffs. It's the so there's a little bit of tire noise, which these have a grippier tire, but you really get a much nicer sound. Uh, the cold start on this was great, and you also get the tech. Now, this has a bit more tech, a bit more visibility, but really compared to you know we're com I'm, I'm cross shopping this with my 2006 WRX, and let's just have a look at what you get here. So down here you've got your your selection here front to rear track mode so and you'll see down here it'll show you the ratio so this whole drive I did in sport and track but if we change this now that's 60 40 that's kind of your around town 60% front 40% rear uh, and then you've got your 30 70 which is your drift peak so that's 70% to the rear and then you push the button and it says track which is 50 50 um, a few other little things you can do. Obviously, down here you've got a button drive mode, and of course, traction control off. Drive mode. Currently, sport mode. So that shows when you're in gear, it'll show in the number in the middle. Maybe not. when you're moving better than parking lot speed. So sport mode, when you're better than parking lot speed, in the middle, in that square in the middle, shows your gear. So we can go through these. There's sport, normal. So there's normal, so there's your, your big taco in the middle for normal, boost gauge on the left, so you got G's on the right. We got eco mode. That shows when it goes green when you wanna when you're you know in driving efficiently. Pretty cool, uh, but yeah, the one we like, sport, and that gives your rev counter across the top. Your speed, so that's your revs up there, your speed there, and then your gear that you're in it comes up there. Pretty nice, and then or you've got a custom as well, so you can blend a few things. Not something I went into because it's not my car. I don't want to set it up. For but really great, you know, the infotainment system on these, big screen, but you know, this is tech we just don't get in, you know, in the older cars. But a lot of the old, you know, when you put it in sport mode, it also changes the weighting of the steering. And it was, you know, driving this was well connected. It wasn't numb, like the Audis in sport mode just feel horribly numb. They just, yeah, just ridiculous. Like it just feels like it's fake weight. But yeah, a heated seat, so driving the track in winter will be comfortable. You know, they've got a, down here, this button here. The IMT, so that's Intelligent Manual Transmission, so that auto blips for you. And then of course you got your fog lights, heated steering wheel, how nice is that? And adjust your projectors. Stuff that you just don't get in an older car, but this doesn't have that new car numbness. So look, I just, I don't know if I could recommend this enough. It's a little bit understated. At the same time, you get to, oh, let's see, we'll look at the, I don't know if I can recommend this enough. It's a bit understated. GR start stop. Check rear seat. But uh, yeah, what a car.
Well, I'm back home after driving that GR Corolla and uh, gave me some time to think about it, you know, hopping back in the Boxster S. First thing I noticed was how heavy the clutch was and, um, you know, and the take up points. Something that I found in the in the GR Corolla was that the pedals weren't very heel toe friendly. The, the brake pedal is a bit high, but wow, you know, it's as a daily driver that you can thrash and take to the track, amazing. But it's a three cylinder. This is uh, this is double it. So this flat six has a little bit more noise to it, uh, even with an aftermarket exhaust. You know, there's there's no replacement for displacement, as they say. But wow. Me 20 years ago, back when I had my WRX, Q, uh, Q picture of the old WRX 20 years ago, which was my daily and as a car I could track, fantastic. And uh, I would wholeheartedly get that GR Corolla now if I was in that position that I was back at then. How does it compare to say our WRX? Well, the WRX is, you know, like I said, 20 years ago it was fine. It's a bit of a cheaper Econo box back then. Um, and uh, cheap Econo boxes have come a long way. And a current Corolla is a super comfortable car and, uh, and capable and great size, you know, similar to the Golf, um, which brings me to the Golf selection. You know, I had a S3, which is similar to the Golf R, uh, same chassis, same size, maybe a bit more luxurious, way number, way, way more numb than that GR Corolla. So if you want something more engaging, driver's car but a, a hatch basically a, a hot hatch i would say that is going to be the hottest hatch you can get um you know we don't have manual golf r's the current one mark 8 in is coming to australia it's only the dsg um the, the compared to the gr yaris which we drove the one we drove didn't have the diffs uh it was the standard one it wasn't the the, in Australia called the Rally. It's got the diffs and lower suspension and forged wheels. But still, you know, on that road, it's not going to make too much of a difference. It's a smaller car and the interior just wasn't quite as nice. It just gives us more Yaris. So that Corolla really steps it up. I mean, it's it's really well appointed and, uh, you know, you could live with that. I mean, uh, my kids are big. I could put them in the back seat. They, you know, with, they wouldn't complain too much. Uh, something that you definitely can't do in the GR Yaris. Um, yeah, look, I mean, it doesn't have the, doesn't have the Audi badge that the S3 had, but it's a Toyota. It's going to go for, it's going to go forever. You know, five year, hundred thousand K warranty here in a, you know, oh, it's a five year thing. Unlimited K warranty. I don't know, whatever. It's got a five year warranty. That's pretty extensive. Um, yeah, just don't wrap it around a tree. And even that doing that would be pretty hard to do because it's great control. Now, I thought, because we talked about shifter feel so much, we'd have a little look at the difference between the shifters, between the GR Corolla, the Boxster S, now this, and uh, our WRX. Okay, Boxster S, now this is a modified shifter. It's got a numeric shifter inside, which is not cheap, but it's freaking awesome. Uh, not a lot of play, very mechanical, just very precise. You know, the, uh, the old rifle bolt analogy. Now here's a GR Corolla. So uh, I forgot to film this, but this is the guys at the dealership doing it for me today. It has the short, it feels like it's got a short throw shifter in it. It's a really short throw, but it doesn't, it, you know, it's not short and stumpy. It's, uh, and there's very minimal play in it. So it feels aftermarket. So yeah, Toyota did an unreal job with this. And here's the shifting on the, uh, on the GD. So the 2001 to 2007 WRX five speed. Uh, with the Cobb short shifter and uh, all the bushings replaced with some white line ones. So minimal play, fairly precise. One thing worth noticing, I gotta mention, is the clutch effort. So the clutch, I got a standard clutch in the Boxster and it is heavy. The GR Corolla was light as anything, just the clutch pedal. And the WRX, this just has a brand new couple day old uh extreme clutch in it um but just a light duty nothing uh, nothing super super heavy and um yeah and this is it's a little bit heavier than the the gr corolla but gr corolla could drive all day the porsche you got a sore leg at the end of a track day